Hi everyone, hope you're well, hope you've had a great week. I'm going to get straight into the teaching. Uh, I don't want to be too long today, but I really want to give you something um, on this part four of what I've been preaching on. It's the last part. I won't carry on like any more than today, but I really want you to watch all four. You can, if you've just started on part four, go back to part one and watch all the way through again. You can watch them separately, but it'll really give you an idea and an understanding of what God is trying to say to us today. Um, I believe God spoke to me some weeks ago and he said to me, if you, you need to tell the people that if you don't pray, if people don't pray, then I can't bring out, send forth my uh, last, my rain on my harvest for the end times. I can't get people saved. I can't pour out my spirit. I can't do anything. In other words, not just thousands, but multi-millions of people, hundreds of millions of people will go to hell unless you pray and unless you tell other people to pray. And most of us don't like to hear about prayer. But let me just tell you something now is that whenever we do something for God, which we are now, we're sacrificing our time, T-I-M-E, time, which is the most important thing to God. Satan wants us to use our time on anything else he possibly can whether it's watching anything on TV or the internet or whatever, or phone or whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with those things. They're not bad, but he, or books even reading, studying material, anything we can, or conversations with people, or just doing something in our lives that uh, takes our time. Satan wants to do that so that we can't give the time to God, but we need to give him that time. I'm not going to go on at you about it, but today I really feel to tell you, if you give God your time, He will bless you. He will bless, even when, when you're praying, when you're doing something for Him and not just for you and for other people and getting people saved through your prayers, then God will bless your own personal life. Remember, that, remember I said a few weeks ago, Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seeking Him first is doing what He's told us to do every day. Seeking Him first is not just saying, God, I love you. I praise you, I adore you, I'm your child. It's giving him what is the most important thing to us. God wants us to keep on, uh, to give our tithes and our offerings uh, as he's led uh, to, our, to, our, to our churches, to our ministries, to those things that we're called to do. He wants us to give finances. Finances are, to, uh, are, are certainly a sacrifice because we're giving part of our time away. But then he also wants us to give our actual time to Him, not just for ourselves and our own personal prayers over ourselves and our own feelings of gratification, but for Him and His church and His body. That's how, that's making Him Lord. That's taking up our cross daily and uh, serving Him. We, the Bible says we need to take up our cross daily and carry it. In other words, do things every day that are not easy for our flesh. And in the physical realm, we might do things to get exercise and so on that, that, are, that is hard. We might have to go on a long walk, a long run, whatever. It's good for us, but it's tough. And spiritually, he wants us to do things that are tough and not just about our own lives. But if you constantly are seeking other people, if you're constantly seeking God's world to help others, believe me, he will help you and bless your life. And prayer for other people, for souls, is certainly one of those important things. So my title here for the Part four here is souls, God's cry. God's crying out to us to pray for souls right now. And I'm showing you how to do it in a very simple way. And then I said, our prayer. Remember I said, God said to me in Isaiah 66, it said, when the church travailed, she brought forth her children. Zion is the church. Isaiah is prophesying and saying, we need to pray. The church needs to pray to bring forth children, to bring forth, in other words, not physical children, but spiritual children, for people to get born again. And God uh, is waiting very, very patiently on this earth to, before he sends Jesus back so that he can get souls. People are living now, there's 8 billion people, and most of those people are not Christians. They haven't heard of Christ. So God right now, while there's the most people on this earth, he wants us to now pray for them. Half of the people that have ever lived in the history of mankind are living right now. What a better time to get someone saved. All the time people are living, they have an opportunity. Before they breathe their last breath, they have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into their life and to get born again. And your prayers 
can be the reason why that person has missed hell and made heaven their home, why they, why they are born again and living eternity in heaven. And believe me, they will know that your prayers on this earth help them get to heaven. And I praise God for that. And so we, we, we spoke about Acts chapter 2, 17 and so on. And we went through quite a few things. Isaiah 66, 8 and 9, Psalm 2, 8 and James 5, 7. Let's just go there today. James 5, 7. It says here, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So in other words, the Lord is coming later than he normally would have. Why is he doing that? Is he coming later so he can see us blessed? So that he can see us um, get more in our lives or learn more? Like I said to you, whether you learn it on, the, Peter said, on, uh, learn it on this side or the other side, you're still going to have to learn the word of God. On the other side, we'll learn in heaven that which we don't learn on this earth. We'll be constantly learning, constantly worshiping God. But it's a good thing to learn on this earth. It's not in vain. Even for when we die, it's not in vain. And so, but God said, be patient, therefore, brethren. Why be patient? Why, in other words, are you extending your return to this earth? Why are we having to wait so long, Jesus? Because you know there are people that are alive now that need to be born again. And the only way they can enter into heaven is John 3, 16 says, unless a man be born of, again, unless a man be born of the flesh and of the spirit, he cannot, or didn't say he will not, didn't say he, uh, he, there's reasons. He just said he cannot. There's only one reason. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He needs to be born again. He needs to have a new spirit to enter new life, to enter heaven. And so God wants people to be born again. He's born of the flesh into this world. He's born as a baby and then he grows up into a man or a woman and then he has an opportunity to get born again. And our prayers create that opportunity more than ever for God to work on somebody, to put them in a place where they can get born again. And so I, I um, just want to go on and say this to you right now, that it says, be patient, verse 7, James 5, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, in other words, the Lord waits for the precious fruit of the earth. The husbandman there being the farmer, God's likening to a farmer. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it. Now, fruit comes from seed. When Jesus died on this earth, listen to what I'm saying to you now. It's very, very important. When Jesus died on this earth, he produced seed right across the earth. That seed was the potential for people to get born again. They couldn't get born again before Jesus died. They couldn't go straight to him. They, 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 even the Jewish people had, uh, that lived by the law of Christ, they could not get straight into heaven. They had to go through a process uh, 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 which I won't explain to you right now, and go to paradise before they could enter heaven. But nobody could enter heaven because Jesus hadn't died. And remember, Kristen spoke a couple of weeks ago about the Syrophoenician woman. She was a Syrian woman. She didn't have a right to go to heaven. And, and so, but when Jesus dying, he said anybody and everybody, whoever they are, whatever background, Jew or Gentile, can get born again and can go to heaven. So Jesus died and produced a seed. So 8 billion people on this earth right now, there's an automatic seed that God has produced for every one of those people. And that seed, that's why he likens it to a farmer, the precious fruit of the earth. And he says he has long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. What is God saying now? He's saying that he wants us to pray for the rain so that the rain will fall on the seed so the seed will grow and produce fruit. In other words, the seed will grow and get that individual saved. Isn't that an amazing God? That seed will grow. At the moment, it's, not, it's just a small seed, but it needs to grow up. And only what can make it grow is rain. So we need to pray for that rain. Jesus already has spread the seed, but we are the farmers. We are also the farmers on this earth that God, the farmer in heaven, is working with. And God needs to work with us. God can't do anything without us. Uh, when I say can't do anything without us, of course he can do things without us. But he needs us to accompany him, to work with him, so that when heaven, man on earth, works with God in heaven together, then God can, can do great things and produce 
the fruit and get people born again. We can do what man can do. And one of the things, like I said, financially, we can give into the kingdom of God and then God can work and pro produce finance and blessing for us back in return. It's the same as our, our prayers. As we pray, God can produce and will produce souls. We don't know how to do that, but God makes us do that which we can do. And one of the things we can do is we can pray. And so I just said to you, please make a decision now. You're going to spend time every day, maybe uh, not seven days a week because you won't do it, possibly six, but if you give five days a week uh, to God and uh, pray every single one of those days and part of that prayer, a lot of that prayer actually, pray for souls and do it in different, with these scriptures that I've given you in the last few weeks, you, you can just watch these videos over and over again and get it into your heart. I've tried to make it very simple for you but we're talking about souls. The Holy Ghost told me how to do this. He spoke to me and said, I need to tell people how to do it. And I need to tell people to do it because I'm not the only person. There's many around, but God's starting to preempt us to preempt you to pray because there needs to come a prayer revival before a spiritual revival. And God is waiting. The husband's waiting. Jesus will not come back until that comes. Jesus is not interested in coming back to multi, multi millions of people, hundreds of millions of people that have not been born again. He wants to give everybody a fair chance, regardless of what we see on the television, regardless of how people, God says God favors certain people. He doesn't favor anybody. The Bible says everybody in Romans is equal, whether Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter whether, whether we're Catholic, Protestant, whoever we are, God loves us all the same. And every single one of us has an opportunity to get born again. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you hate your neighbor. Well, hopefully you don't hate your neighbor. But it doesn't matter how bad your neighbor's been or, or not, or what background he comes from, or where, where, what part of the world he was born, he, or what culture he comes from. God says his desire is for every man to get born again. And in the Bible, God talks about a measure of faith that he gives us. So if our prayers will draw that person through a measure of faith means that every person he puts inside them a desire to seek God, a desire to seek God. And our prayers enable that person, enable God to find that person. And through whatever process, through a preacher, a minister or someone else, it doesn't matter. Even Jesus could appear to that person. Whatever it is, God will touch that person's life and enable them to get born again. Isn't that a good God? My God, I love God with all my heart. I'm called to be a preacher. A preacher is the, the greatest calling and a teacher. You know why? Because you're doing things that will last for eternity. No matter how great a business you have on this earth, no matter how much money you have, no matter how famous you are on this earth, the minute you die is a process of everything you've done is beginning to be forgotten. You might be very, very well known, one of the most well known people on this earth, but as the years go by, it just amounts to nothing. You're just history. But with Christ, when you get to heaven, you've kept so many things alive after you've died. You've helped so many people get born again. You've helped so many people to financially get free. You've helped so many people's lives to change for the good. And then you've helped other generations. Many, many, many mothers and grandmothers, even the Bible talks about uh, Lois and other grandmothers and mothers uh, and Eunice and so on that prayed for their children and their grandchildren. They prayed for them. That's happened all over the world. You've prayed for so many years. You've prayed for souls. You might be dying soon, but I want to tell you, you've left a legacy on this earth. So God says here, be patient therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. <coughs> if you hold the husband and waits for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. What do we need to do? We need to start praying for God's rain and ask God to send forth his rain. Again, ask God to send his rain upon places that he puts in your heart. Play, and wherever you're watching now, those places around you, those places, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, in other words, places around you, places that he's put on your heart to pray for, places where your descendants come from. Pray that God will send his rain. I pray, I say, Father God, I pray that you'll send forth your rain upon every person in the world that I'm called to minister to. I ask you, Father God, to send forth your rain upon every person in the world that I'm called to minister to. You know who I'm called to minister to. You know, and I, there's multi-millions of people that I believe I'm called to minister to. So I ask you to send forth your reign upon them. Let that seed that Jesus died grow up. And then when I'm ministering, 
They can get saved. When someone else is ministering, they can get saved. But I'm praying specifically myself right now. I've prayed many years for God to send his, forth his reign on different places. But, the, but now in the last couple of years, I've prayed specifically for those I'm called to minister to. So that as I evangelize and as God uses me in the years ahead, that those people are already softened by God to get saved and born again. Let's just go to Matthew 9, 38. Matthew 9, 38, if you wouldn't mind going there. I hope you're getting excited. I'm excited because I want to be a blessing to God's kingdom. And I know that I'm only going to live one life on this earth. And when I die, I want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all that bothers me. It doesn't bother me about what anybody else has done. I don't want to do what someone else has done. I only want to do what God has told me to do. I want to give financially what God wants me to do financially. I want to give my time. I want to give him my calling. I want to do exactly in God's timing, in which is not always my timing, in God's season, what I'm called to do in my life in the years ahead. And you should be exactly the same. And don't let the devil lie to you and say you can't maximize your potential in God because you truly can. Matthew 9 verse 38 says, uh, verse 37 says this. Then says the Lord unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenty. See, we're praying for God's reign over the harvest. He likens it unto a harvest again. The harvest is plenteous, <coughs> but the laborers are few. What he's saying is, is all this harvest is out there, all this work to be done, but there's not many people that will go and do God's work. There's not many people that will pray like I'm saying today. There's not many people that will give finances. There's not many people that will honor God's work. But I believe it's going to change. And I believe all of a sudden there's going to be people praying all over the world. There's going to be people giving finances all over the world. There's going to be people doing massive things all over the world because the Bible says that's what's going to happen. And then he says, <coughs> he didn't say he's going to pray. He didn't say to the disciples, he's going to do it. He said, pray you therefore. I'm a disciple. My son's a disciple. My daughter's a disciple. People around me are disciples. Those that know me well, they're disciples. If you're a Christian, you're a disciple. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest, God, Christ, Father God, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. In other words, what he's saying is we prayed for the rain. We're praying for the rain. The harvest has grown up. Father God, send forth laborers that will minister to those people. Maybe it's a preacher. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a mother. Maybe it's a, a father. Maybe it's a son. Maybe it's a grandson. I got my, grand, praise God, got my, all my grandparents saved. Maybe it's, it's, it's somebody or a situation or a, a, an evangelist or whatever it is. It's not your problem. That's God's problem. But pray you that God sends forth laborers. But a lot of laboring is one-on-one. -on -one. After, after you people of one-on-one -on -one got someone saved or born again, then that person can come to a service, can come to a church service, can come and watch someone like myself on YouTube and can learn more. But that first part of getting saved is, yes, there's thousands get saved in rallies and in meetings, hundreds of thousands. In fact, some of Rana Bonka meetings, he had more than a million people saved, even two million in Africa. But... The best way is by someone that knows you and God using that person to say the sinner's prayer with you. And praise God, I can honestly say in my life, just especially before I got in the ministry, when I was in business, um, over the years, you know, not that I'm adding numbers, but I reckon at least two and a half thousand people that I was able, over the years that I, that I got to know and clients of mine and people just at the right time in the right place would say the sinner's prayer with me. So I always think of those roughly two and a half thousand people and I think, praise God, I was able to have a part in that by the grace of God to the glory of God, not through me, but through Christ within me. But he says there, <coughs> he says, pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. So he needs us to pray. The harvest is there. In other words, the farmer's there. The tractors are waiting, but the farmer won't go until he can put petrol in the tractors. Our prayers are the, that petrol for the tractors, so the tra and the combine harvesters, that's what you call them, can go out there and harvest. So pray that God will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now I have God, especially the last year or so, and especially during this virus, He's had people put on my mind that as they come, as I'm praying, suddenly a face will come out of the blue. It could be 30 years ago. It could be more than that. It could be 20 years ago, 10 years ago. It could be a famous person. It could be a football player. It could be a comedian. It could be someone on television. It could be a, a, a very poor person, a rich person, a, a fat person, a thin person. It doesn't matter. But he's laid so many people individually just out of the blue on my heart. 
And then I say, God, Father God, I ask you to send forth laborers to that person and their wife or their children, <coughs> their families, their parents, whoever they are, all those families around about them. I break your power, Satan. You're not going to stop them from receiving the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not <coughs> come against their mind and prevent them getting saved. You take your hands off their minds. And I ask you, Father, to send forth laborers to those people right now. All the time, God is doing that to me. I, I'm constantly thinking of people nearly every day and it just comes to me as I'm praying. The more I've prayed, that face will come and as I do it and if I forget to do it, 10 minutes later, God brings it back to me. It doesn't matter where they're from, whatever, it might be someone I met 10 years ago, it might be somebody that was at school with me, it might be people in my class. Well, you know, we, uh, we, 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 we think differently and so on and, uh, and some of us remember those in my class. But, you know, in, in, in a funny sort of a way, what happens, uh, I, 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 I sit in my class and I, 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 can, I can just suddenly see the teacher and uh, she's going through the alphabet, you know, and the, I don't know what they do today, but they'd have registration and make sure all the children were in the class and they'd go right through the alphabet from A downwards. And sometimes when I'm concentrating and just think of, I can just remember the names uh, right down there and then God will bring a name to me. Pray for that, pray for that person, pray for that person. I haven't seen them since I was at school which was only a couple of years ago, but I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them all these years. It doesn't matter. What happens is God's preparing, wants me to pray for that person. And then I might just pray for someone I met yesterday. I might pray for somebody uh, that, I, that, I, that, that is close to me. It doesn't matter. But pray, therefore, God of the harvest. So just lastly to say here, uh, I, I, I want to say to you how important it is that, uh, that we pray for people because he hell is a real place. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And, uh, you know, hell is downwards. As you know, I haven't got time to get into that, but heaven's up. Everything you see in the Bible is us going up. Jesus come down to pick us up. Heaven's up. Heaven's up there out of this atmosphere. I'll explain more to you about that in the weeks ahead. But hell's beneath. Hell's beneath. And hell is a real place. And so I'd heard of people that have gone to hell and so on and, and, and praise God through God's grace had got saved and cried out for Jesus to save them. But I, I remember God led me to a scripture um, in, in Isaiah 14. Let's just go to Isaiah 14. I don't want to frighten anybody, but I just want to tell you that this is real and people don't think about these things many times until they get to the end of their lives. And that's why we need to think about them and we need to pray for people. But uh, I remember... Uh, I, I, I remember when I was just amazed one day that a, a, a lady that I knew very well, her mother had died when she was very young and Satan had tried to torment her mind while she was dying. She was afraid of death and fear came on her. And she said that uh, the day that her mother died, uh, uh, it, all the, ha the locks in the, the house, the doors were locked and suddenly they were open and this horrific darkness came and her mother died and she said it just put, uh, made her so terribly depressed. And I want to tell you now is that hell is, he, Satan is much more evil than you think he is. And if he can get people and try and destroy their lives, he'll do it. And he'll do it as fast as lightning. The same as God will bless you as fast as lightning, Satan will try and destroy people's lives as fast as lightning. And, and, and I, I remember a man that knew my dad and the man said, he said that be, people have been praying for him. Uh, he didn't know Christ, but people have been praying for him. He's driving down the road, there's a truck coming down the other road and a metal, massive metal sheet, a massive metal sheet fell off the truck, started, truck started sliding towards his car. And the truck, uh, the, the sheet went on top of the bonnet right through the window and uh, would have chopped his head off. But he said, before it went through the window, he heard this voice say, get down, get down, get down. Nobody was in the car and physically he was pushed down. That was through his mother's or father's prayers. He was pushed down. He got uh, gloriously, uh, came out of that accident without any, any injury and got born again. Praise God for his goodness. God is a good God. But I want to tell you how from beneath the Bible says in Isaiah 14, 14 verse 9, Isaiah 14 verse 9, how from beneath, not how from up there, up there's heaven, down there's hell. In between there's heaven and hell in the spirit realm, so to speak, where Satan, they're trying to rule through people. Satan's trying to rule through people. God is wanting people to get on his side and work with him. Jesus has died, giving us all the power, but it's up to people to use that power against Satan. But Satan's on this earth to try and destroy people. But hell is his residence. 
Hell is where he lives, like an ant heap. They'll come out of the heap, but they live in that ant heap, and then they take control in that ant heap. God does not live in hell. God uh, can, can, uh, is everywhere, but it's not his abode. But I want to tell you now is, is that it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Hell is moved to meet you at his coming. Satan is desperate. The minute you die, then it, you, you have no more right over heaven and hell. You have no more right to ask Christ into your life. That's why we need to pray for people. What happens is the minute you die, then if you're not born again or you've rejected Christ uh, in, in terms of I don't want to get saved, I'm not interested in getting born again, hell from beneath will come and meet thee uh, and come up and pull you down. And it says it stirs up the dead for you. In other words, all of the dead and the evil down there and hell itself gets all excited because they've got another recruit. <clears throat> I don't want you to be or anybody to be that recruit. And, he, and Satan will pull you down there. There's nothing you can do. And the minute you die, even though you try and stop yourself, many people have said that, you just go right down and descend into hell. Uh, I don't want to go on about it and I don't want to frighten you. But I just want to say to you that hell is a real place. And I remember I'd been... Uh, in, in, in a part of Africa with, with, with a friend of mine. And uh, I, wasn't, I ministered once, but he, he was doing all the ministry and hundreds of thousands of people were saved. So I said to the Lord, I want to have a revelation again of hell being the place it is. We go through lives and, you know, we've got the NHS or we've got some medical plan and uh, we even have perfect funerals. Everything looks great and, uh, and Satan is whisked whisked us off and all we think about is how much money we've left in our will or the pension plan we had but the reality is death comes and Satan tries to make it like you know someone's just gone off the planet let's just carry on but where's that person gone to where have they gone to well that's my job <clears throat> part of my job is I've got an evangelical heart I know that I teach and I preach and I minister and God's taught me to do a lot of diverse things but I want to tell you is is that I want to evangelize people like never before to get people saved. But we need to pray. We need to pray. Like I said, we need to pray. I feel in my heart to tell you this. Like never before, we need to pray. Because hell from beneath will try and come up. Hell from beneath will try and whisk people down. So I said to the Lord, I want to have a greater revelation because I, I want a heart for souls like never before. Yes, there's, uh, there's a lot of people personally being saved with me. Yes, I've done my best throughout my ministry that I've been in, in, in the West, in the first world, which hasn't been easy, but I've done my very, very best to get people saved and born again. But I want to see a time in my ministry where multi-millions get born again, just through me, not because I'm great, but because Jesus is great. And I want you to use others out there, but use me. Give me, a, give me, use me as your vessel. I'm a vessel that's ready and meet for the master's use. And I said, Lord, just give me a greater revelation of that. Well, I, I came back from Africa, forgot that I'd said it. We often ask the Lord things. And about two or three months after I said it, uh, I remember exactly, uh, we were staying in another house, uh, the family. And, and, and then I went into, uh, just desired one, day, one night to go to the bathroom and, and went into the bathroom one night and had, had the most horrific situation, so bad that I thought I was going to hell. I didn't realize that God was answering my prayers. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize that God was, was answering the prayer that I prayed. God will often answer prayers and you think, oh, I didn't think it was going to be like that. But I went and as I went to go into the bathroom, I was, I was pulled down into the toilet bowl that was open. I wasn't going to the toilet. I was just pulled to look down. And as I looked down, I was drawn down. It was like it, uh, uh, I went into darkness. I had a vision of total darkness. I didn't go right down to hell, but this thing this being there, which I didn't see, was pulling me down, pulling me down. And I was saying, I don't want to go. I don't want to go down there. I don't want to go down there. Why am I going down there? I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Oh my God, I can't, I can't help myself. And this thing was just pulling me, pulling me, pulling me, pulling me. Well, I got the, the biggest fight of my life. I thought my life had ended and I thought I hadn't got saved. I wasn't going to heaven. I was going down to hell. It just pulled me down and down and down and down. Well, that must have lasted about 15 seconds. But that 15 seconds felt like a lifetime to me. And my God, oh my God, I just thought I had no power over myself. I had no power. I had a, uh, uh, my life was ended. I was dead. I was dying. I was just pulled down into darkness and darkness. And this thing had come up, hell from beneath, had stirred itself up to come and meet me and pull me down. And then I came up and I came out of this vision that was just terrible. 
uh, and I heard this voice saying to me, remember you asked me in Africa? That's what hell, that's the beginning of hell for people that go to hell. Go out there and get people saved. Well, I've never forgotten that because I, it was such a real experience to me that uh, it's given me more of a desire to get people saved. And no man on this earth is going to stop me doing it. I'm going to do God's work. I'm going to go out there because I've got a revelation that there is a real hell and there is a real heaven. And just lastly here, I'll just be a couple of minutes. I want you to go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. If we just go there, I learn about Isaiah 43, uh, praying for people. Isaiah 43 is, 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 is for us that are maturing God. When we're maturing God, because Isaiah 43 talks about imploring God. Uh, that's what it means, doesn't say it directly. But what it means is coming to God and desperately pleading with God. Pleading with God. In other words, you don't plead with someone you don't know very well. If you go into the shop and you don't know somebody very well, you're not going to plead with that person. You don't know them. You've got to earn a right to plead. They've got to earn a right with you. So God and myself had earned to write together. I'd earned to write with him and he'd earned to write with me for me to go and plead with him. So uh, I felt the Lord say to me here to tell you that if you get Isaiah 43, 25 and 26 into your heart, read, read it many, many times and listen to it. Um, but uh, God wants us to plead with him for souls. God wants us to plead with him for souls. Remember again, I told you that... Uh, in, in, in Matthew 15, Christian spoke about the Syrophoenician woman where God almost ignored her. Jesus ignored her, not because he didn't love her, but he wanted her to come and say, God, I insist. I insist you do that. Well, I, I learned that many, many years ago. <clears throat> of course, I could tell you 50 stories about Isaiah 43, but I learned it many years ago, and God has told me to tell you you can do this for souls. But he says here, and I'll, I'll tell you something now, but he says here, I even I am he that blots out thy transgressions for mine own sake. In other words, he forgives our sins because if we're in sin in our lives, he can't move on our behalf. That's why we need to get rid of our sins and walk right before God. We can't be perfect, but we need to be in a place where our heart is right, where our heart's desires to not sin. But if we're walking in sin on the one foot and not in sin on the other foot, there's nothing he can do. And it says he will not remember thy sins. So he says he wants us to do that so that we can be in a place for Isaiah 43, 26. He says, put me in remembrance. Well, we put him in remembrance that he's forgiven our sins. In other words, we're washed in the blood. We have a right to come into his presence. He's our daddy. He's our father. We've got to know him. We have a right to implore him. We have a right to speak to him. We have a right. And then he says, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. <laughs> well, God is a God that doesn't lie. So he's saying if we do what's right, we can be justified and God lacked on our behalf. Well, I remember, and I could just tell you, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. I could tell you many, many of these stories and will do over the months and years ahead. But I remember a, a very close friend of mine that was a young man that had a, he was a born again Christian, but he'd gone away from God. He'd gone away from God. He wasn't serving God anymore. So, of course, the devil got a hold of him. Uh, and just as a young man, I'm talking about, you know, uh, not younger than middle age. He wasn't very old. He just in one night, he had a terrible stroke. Uh, and in that terrible stroke, he was he was he'd been a very strong born again Christian, gone away from God and then had that had a stroke and the stroke uh, incapacitated him. Satan did that. God did not do that. Satan did that. So uh, because God is a good God, he doesn't know how to do evil. But Satan did it. And so they, they told me he'd be dead within 24 hours. All his organs were shutting down. But then the Lord led me here. Uh, uh, and of course, I didn't know a lot about this. I know a lot more about Isaiah 43 now. But he said, now put me, uh, plead together for me, with me about this young man. He's still a young man. So I said to the Lord, he used to serve you. He, 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 he'll come back to you. I pray and ask you that he'll come back, that you use this to bring him back to you. And uh, he's still a young man. He's not an old man. He's not ready to die yet. He's not a, a, of an old age. And there's much more that you can do for him. He's talented in many, many ways. And so, Lord, I'm going to ask you and plead with you now that you don't let him die. The doctors have said he'll be dead within 24 hours. All his organs uh, are failing. But I'm going to plead with you, God, as I'm your servant now, and I know you as my daddy, I'm going to plead that that doesn't happen. Well, I heard the Lord say to me, say it a second time. I said it a second time. Then I heard him say to me, say it a third time. I said it a third time. He said, I've done what you said. He said, let us plead together. In other words, he'll plead with you. 
He'll put his side. God will put his side. I put my side. But God listened to me because I pleaded with him. I pleaded with him and God heard me and had mercy on me. And because God had mercy on me, he had mercy on this man. So then, he, <clears throat> then I declared it. And I said, God, you said it so. It shall be so. I declare it shall be so. Declaring is speaking it out. I say that that good friend of mine, that young man, that man that is a really good friend of mine, he's not going to die right now. His organs aren't going to shut down. And all the doctors are going to be amazed. And he's going to have a long life. And he's going to come back to you. Well, like I said before, God did, I did. God did and he did. And within a, a, a very short period of time, they phoned me. They said, we don't know what's happened, but he's just so okay. Within a 24-hour period, he's so fine. He's so okay that um, not only does he, is, 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 is he, is, does he not have to stay in hospital much longer, but he's 100% all right. He's ready to go home. He went home within 24 hours. God did a miracle. Well, you see, uh, God said to me just to finish off today that if you cry out to him for souls, you could cry out to him for your neighbors, to your family, to those around you. Instead of criticizing them all the time and saying, I'm superior to them, start to bless them, start to have mercy, start to cry out and say, God, I, I'm going to plead with you for my friend, for my, for my dad. I'm going to plead with you for my sister. I'm going to plead with you for that little town that's, that's so controlled by the devil. I'm going to plead with you for that place th thousands of miles away. I'm going to say, the Bible says in the book of Acts, that me and my family shall be saved. I'm going to say, Lord, that it's your will that people get saved, that you're waiting to come back to this earth for people to get saved. So right now, my prayers will enable you to come back sooner. So God, when I plead with you now, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to plead with you now. I'm going to tell you now, you, have no, you can't plead against this. It's your will even more than mine that people get saved. So right now, Lord, I'm going to stand in agreement with you. And, I, and I'm pleading with you, so you have to agree to this. And I'm going de to declare, Lord, that because this is your will, even more than my will, my prayers are going to enter heaven and you are going to get these people that I'm praying for saved. You are going to do a miracle in that town. You're going to do a miracle in that city. You're going to do a miracle in that country. You're going to do a miracle with my friend, with my brother, whoever it might be. And you say, Lord, because of that, I'm justified. See, I was justified with my friend. And because I was justified, God had to work on my behalf. So therefore, I'm justified with souls. I'm justified. <clears throat> Forgive me, Lord, for criticizing all the time, putting people down. Just happy that me and my family and us four are no more going to heaven. Give me a desire, Lord, to get people saved and born again. Let my prayers go extend beyond my little suburb where I live. Let them go out into the world. And I'm not going to stop praying right now for the rest of my life. But Holy Spirit, you lead me to pray and you guide me. Bless you, everybody, to watch, for watching. Uh, you might have to watch this more than once or twice, but I believe it'll really bless you. I spoke from the heart of God this time and all the four times. Please watch them. Please take your time. It's not only life-saving for those around about you, but it becomes blessings in your life. God bless you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.